Representative Miller, Senator Linares, and Representative Amen, as well as members of the continuing of the uh, Planning and Development Committee. My name is Dan Morley. I'm the Assistant Director for Intergovernmental Policy within the Office of Policy and Management. And in the interest of time, I am going to be summarizing the written testimony before you that was submitted by Acting Undersecretary Dave Lavasser in support of Ray Senate Bill 1045, an act concerning municipal plans of conservation and development. OPM supports the provisions of this raised bill because it will further strengthen the cross-acceptance process um, that, uh, that um, will result in more robust and timely municipal plans of conservation and development, as well as improved coordination uh, between municipal land use commissions and the respective water pollution control authority. Um, as you may recall, the cross-acceptance process was created uh, through Public Act 10-138, and its intention was to bring greater compatibility between state, regional, and local plans of conservation and development. Um, what I'd like to do, just in the interest of time, is, uh, as a reminder, the continuing legislative committee on state planning and development, who shepherds through the state plan of conservation and development, um, prior to it, the General Assembly's passage of the, or adoption of the plan in 2013, offered an endorsement letter and that letter was dated May 15, 2013. I just wanted to um, paraphrase a few statements from that, which I think provides the background as to why um, uh, this uh, raised bill is uh, a good thing. It states that the continuing committee recognizes that many have expressed concern over the way in which the state plan has been implemented in the past, particularly with regard to the manner in which some state agencies have relied upon the locational guide map to determine a proposed project consistency with the state plan. Um, and for the purpose of obtain, obtaining state or federal funding. It goes on to state that upon adoption of the state plan, the new priority funding area requirements associated with Chapter 297A of the General Statutes effectively ensures that no state agency will use the locational guide map by itself to determine the consistency of a proposed state action with the state plan. And finally, it says a growth-related project that is not located within priority funding area um, or if a pro growth related project is not located in a priority funding area, the general statute prescribes an exception process that is weighted toward determining the project's consistency with the municipal plan of conservation and development. And for that reason, it states that it is critical that the municipal plans of cons conservation and development be as robust as possible to reflect coordinated local infrastructure, community development, and conservation plans. So I believe that's exactly what this um, bill would do and I'd be happy to answer any questions on it. Are there any questions? Well, I'm, for one, uh, I would just like to say completely supportive of, of addressing the issue of sewage uh, systems because I think that we've ignored them in a lot of areas in the state and not really paid attention to the fact that in order to have good economic development, we need good infrastructure and infrastructure in the line of uh, sewage treatment and sewage plans are something that we need to look at in order to uh, uh, plan for this very expensive piece of infrastructure and, uh, and I appreciate uh, your comments today. You're welcome. Uh, Representative Amen. I think we must have done something right uh, because we haven't met as a committee now when it seemed like for a while you were in front of us on a very, very regular basis with towns appealing, so some of the uh, things that we did. I thought that uh, the planned sewer service and future sewer service areas were already on the plan of development for the individual towns. Yeah, if I can, uh, I'll try to relate to that. Um, within, you're saying that within the local plans? Right, within the local plans. Yeah, um, that is, it doesn't always happen, and I think in more instances than not, that is the case. Um, what we're suggesting here is that the local planning commission, when they go about their process of preparing or amending their local plan of conservation and development, take the existing um, uh, sewer service area plans that's been adopted by their WPCA, if any, um, and then and then determine mm -hmm. within the time frame of its 10-year POCD what that shape should be. Because again, if you remember, the issue with the way that, um, and I don't mean to pick on any particular agency, but I know the issue that was brought up um, a, a few
few years ago was with regard to how the DEP staff um, determined the consistency of their clean water fund projects with the state plan. And it was, um, there was not a lot of clarity, I'll put it that way, with regard to somebody who was proposing a local project, whether or not they could um, incorporate sewers there. What we're looking to do here, and because the way in that the priority funding area statutes are created, particularly 16A-35D, the exception processes I referred to puts the full weight on the Municipal Plan of Conservation and Development, not on the WPCA's plan. So what we're saying is that the WPCA's plan as adopted should be then incorporated either in whole or in part within the, w, within the um, Planning Commission's local POCD. Uh, following up on that, it, one of the problems, as I'm sure you remember, was a lot of the plans would call for an area of a municipality to be sewered, but they would not show where the lines were going to go because depending on how development went and which developer would pay for them to extend the lines would actually determine where they were going to go. Would that flexibility still be there that this is the area we want sewered, but we're not sure exactly how the pipes are going to get there? Well, again, I think the, the onus here is on the municipality. Um, if that extension is straying outside of the state's defined priority funding area, an exception can be made if it's consistent with the local plan of conservation and development. So it's really incumbent upon the local approvals to make that happen. That's the whole idea here is to this, some official with the state should not be making judgments on whether this parcel or that parcel should be connected. We want to have more clarity brought to the EEP staff as to what the local intentions are. If the local intentions have changed, then they may update their local POCD. Yeah. And once that's adopted, then that can inform the DEP staff decisions going forward. But um, just taking it to two uh, parcels of land that we want that the town wants to have soared, but they don't know if they're going to go up on the street that's on the west side of those parcels or the street on the east side of those parcels. Would they be having just to indicate that those parcels will be soared or where the sewer line is going to go? I'm not quite sure I follow the question. Can you can you re rephrase it? If you if we have several parcels of land that bridge two roads, one on the east and one on the west side of it. The sewer commission or the water pollution control authority ha does not know at this point if they're going to come up on the east side road or the west side road, but eventually they want both those parcels sewered. Would that just show that the parcels will be sewered at some time in the future or where the trunk line would have to be located? Yeah, well, I, I believe that would be typically shown as part of the planned sewer service area. Um, you could have a planned area that, again, there doesn't need to be certainty brought to it until such time as there are um, you know, ass assessments on those properties. But a planned area is uh, what we're talking about here. We're talking about existing and planned sewer service areas. So, again, the, the local POCD would be looking out 10 years and saying, with regard to the sewer service area existing and planned that was adopted by the WPCA, do we envision within this 10-year period that happening in the, um, in the area that's considered planned? It may be 20 years out, in which case they may choose not to reflect that at the present time. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Any further questions? Seeing none, thanks so much for coming. You're welcome. Uh, next up is Representative Laviel.